All right, so hi, uh, and welcome to our session. Uh, I'm Matt Stevenson. I'm a uh, PhD candidate at the University of Tennessee in the Theory and Practice of Teacher Education Department. Uh, it's my colleague, Dr. Christopher Rounds. Uh, he is a professor of African American Studies, or really just U.S. history, uh, but. No, it's, hey. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a professor of uh, African American Studies at South Carolina State University, which is a historically black college in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So our, uh, our makeup was originally, there was four of us uh, up here. Uh, one had a scheduling conflict, so she had to drop out. Uh, and another one got sick two days ago, so he had to drop out. So you guys then are fortunate enough to hear the legacy of African American studies from two white guys now. Which is not unusual, I would say, uh, in the history of that. So, um, but that said, uh, we do have some statements from our colleagues as well. So, uh, but at the same time, uh, this is not about us telling you what African American studies, the AP level, should look like, or what films should, should be in there. Uh, this is going to be much more of an open discussion forum uh, than anything else. I do have an uh, opening statement, uh, which is, I timed it this morning, it's less than six minutes, or I'm sorry, less than seven minutes. Uh, then we do have a couple of statements we want to read about just concepts of the film itself. But after that, uh, we did have a, a poll put up on the, um, the app for this conference uh, where people could weigh in on what films they either expected or would like to see shown. Uh, in an African American Studies course at the AP level, and we just kind of want to go through that, talk about the films, why people went and picked these films, what we can expect out of that, uh, what can be good uses for these films, and maybe not so good. And that's where you guys come in. So I mean, most of this is going to be sort of an active participation. We're just more facilitators once we get to that part. Okay. And again, everybody can hear me okay because again, there's only one microphone, and we do have teacher voices, so I don't think that would be much of a problem. Um, but without that, we'll continue. And I'm not going to keep this plugged in. We didn't know there was going to be AV equipment in here. Uh, but um, I will leave this up there as a written statement. And then I'll be moving back and forth as needed. <clears throat> OK. So the role and use of popular film in teaching at AP African American Studies. So advanced placement courses offer college credit for high school students in a manner equivalent to dual enrollment programs offered by many local colleges. The college board courses are an opportunity for students to selectively pursue content areas in which they feel comfortable and confident and accepting a more challenging curriculum without the overwhelming demands of, say, an international baccalaureate program. For decades, the social study options have been human geography, world history, United States history, and European history, as well as government and economics. In 2021, the College Board announced its intent to expand the curriculum by adding African American studies uh, to be developed during the 2021-2022 school year and then pilot over the next two years, beginning with 60 schools, then expanding to over 150 schools, and finally to reach nationwide release. Uh, currently, we are in that second year of this pilot program, and therefore anticipate that AP African American course will be available nationwide for the 2024 and 2024 school year, at which point students will take their first end of course exam. If you're familiar with the AP curriculum, there is that uh, the exam portion in the May. Uh, the conservative, a small c, uh, nature of College Board helps to explain why it has taken this long to reach the piloting stage. College Board, like any corporate nonprofit, has to be very profitable, Pearson LLC, uh, does not like change, especially when the status quo has been working like gangbusters. We recognize that the push for developing African American studies occurs in the wake of a significant moment in American race-based history. As college, uh, the colleges, and his, uh, sorry, as colleges and universities were pushed to introduce the first African American studies courses during the Heroes era of uh, the Civil Rights Movement circa 1968, uh, so too has College Board been dragged into the 21st century in the wake of the George Floyd Breonna Taylor uprising of 2020. Uh, I was a high school teacher following the summer of 2020 with four preps, AP World, AP Euro, AP Capstone Seminar, and AP Capstone Research. I remember seeing the desperate reactions of administrators in my school, much like College Board, to show their support for the lowercase Black Lives Matter movement and to demonstrate that they were on the side of racial justice. Our AP coordinator, along with my assessing vice principal, called me into a meeting to discuss the implementation of documents and meeting that discuss the African diaspora into the AP seminar. No mention was made of AP Euro or AP World courses. Uh, it was a topic I was already covering uh, in my courses. <clears throat> uh, in their excitement, my administrator went so far as to suggest we create two distinct sections of the AP seminar. One with the, and this is her quote, normal curriculum, and one dedicated to topics of the African diaspora. Uh, with no small amount of irony, and I will admit some indignation in my voice, I looked at the administrator and asked, are we going to segregate these courses? So, the language I chose was intentional and achieved its intention, as their faces froze in silent horror at the realization of where their suggestions had led. I honestly believed there was no ill intent, 
They simply had not thought this through. <clears throat> the introduction of Af the African American studies is a landmark in the development of the college work curriculum. The opportunity to expand access to college credit for young black boys and girls is a point to be celebrated. However, it is also a moment of reflection and even caution. There is danger in creating, or perhaps I say exacerbating, uh, the resegregation of America's school with a divided curriculum. Is the African American Studies course going to be the, I use a capital B here, black history course to stand in for as a sort of opposition to the A push course? Could the selective nature of the advanced placement curriculum end up selecting our way to an even more divided student body? Certainly this seems to be the, and again now I use the capital C, conservative fear in state legislatures in Florida, Virginia, Arkansas, and even here in Tennessee. Of equal consideration is the introduction of an AP African American Studies course is going to be, okay, is this going to be a shortcut of token activism wherein College Board can signal its, lowercase l, liberal agenda uh, while mandating an outdated and outmoded examination of, of, system, of examination system emblematic of institutional racism. Are we going to allow AP African American Studies to fall in line with APUSH, AP World, and AP Euro, wherein the, again, capital letter B, black experience, uh, in America is summed up in a 55 multiple choice question exam at the end of the year. <clears throat> it is with these questions in mind that I would like to push my hopes and, yeah, pretty openly my agenda. Uh, what if we really could make African American studies something different? What if instead of a high stakes, high pressure, gatekeeping style end of course exam in line with the other AP social studies courses, College Board fully embraced the capstone model with a year long research project on student led topics? Uh, this is the method used uh, during the pilot year. Why would we want to switch back? Uh, why would we let our OKC okay, conservative elements in College Board codify the value of art, poetry, music, and yes, film? Why would we turn African American studies into another history course? Imagine if we were to allow students, in capital letter for all races, uh, lead the charge as we as educators facilitate teaching methods, not content, teaching research, not memorization, teaching appreciation and not panic when it comes to exams, teaching education, not monopolizing educational knowledge. Does College Board have enough faith in our young black learners and in our young white learners to be interested in a similar, a similar learning model? So at this point, we turn to film. Uh, when it comes to bridging the gap between the wide array of American identities, film has traditionally had a powerful influence. Uh, the common experience of watching a mainstream cinematic feature film intended for a mass consumer base, as opposed to targeted and at times limited appeal of a history or cultural uh, documentary, is the essence of the social in our studies. Uh, we, can, uh, we can expect the role of film in any African American studies course as it has been treated in all social studies curriculum, for better or for worse. Uh, film, when used effectively in the history classroom, can be utilized as an aid to develop interpretive skills, demonstrate historiography, provide multiple perspectives on a particular historical topic, depict historical atmosphere, or create empathy for historical period or historical characters. Film can also be used as a springboard for class discussions of these issues. But expanding beyond the history curriculum to a true culture study model, a cultural study model, uh, film serves as a marker for what is popular, what is acceptable, and what is marketable. It is this, admittedly, small part of a wider curriculum consideration that we hope to address today with our examination of various films that uh, we would want and expect to be shown in the African American Studies classroom. What we hope uh, you will take from today is greater consideration on the use of film in the classroom as a microcosm for the possibilities for engagement, students and learning practices, and media literacy. Okay, so that kind of ends our formal part of this presentation. So we'll plug this guy. I'll probably plug this back in once or twice more, because there are some slides I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. But, um, in the meantime, uh, we want to kind of open up our thoughts on film. So, around, you want to? Sure. And I'd like to reaffirm Matt's earlier statement that this is opinion. Uh, we are not with the college board. Uh, we are not trying to establish what types of films uh, need to be, should be taught in these courses. But as history professors and, and as educators, uh, those films that we think would be particularly effective in an AP African American Studies context. Uh, when Matt and I started discussing this, uh, the first thought I had is that it, this course, if it's going to implement film at all, and maybe it, it won't, you know, it's always going to be the prerogative of the particular instructor, uh, but if they implement film, 
they should ensure that the films they are choosing are films by black artists, not just about black persons. Now, there is space for this in the African American Studies curriculum because there are, of course, rightly so, references to visual arts, uh, expressive arts. And so these films are not just uh, you know, works of art unto themselves, but these are also examples of that artistic uh, tradition. So, the kind of works that I would like to see, you know, slight tangent here, uh, but exploitation films aside, um, that's, a, that's probably a whole other panel discussion. Um, now, I have found that with my students, they have no idea what black exploitation films, what that genre even was. Now, all my students are African American, but they are also all 18 to 22 years old. Uh, so uh, they, um, with rare exceptions, uh, have never even heard that term of black exploitation. Um, so whether you you know use those types of Films, which would be a very interesting thing to do, you know, I'll put to the side for, for now. Uh, but the types of, of films that I would hope instructors would use would be films by an artist like Spike Lee, Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, Black Klansman, uh, John Singleton, of course, Boys in the Hood, uh, The Hughes Brothers, a film like Dead Presidents. Uh, Steve McQueen, now Steve McQueen is, is British, um, not American, but as a, as a black person, of course he directed 12 Years a Slave. Uh, Eva DuVernay directed Selma, Regina King, One Night in Miami, and Shaka King, who directed Judas and the Black Messiah, and many, many others. And one of the reasons that I would hope to see that is because I believe that these films and those directors um, offer a different perspective of the black experience in this country than some of the movies that are about black people, but directed, written, or produced uh, by white individuals' offers. Uh, so for instance, you look at a film like Mississippi Burning. Now, we're going to talk about the era in which these films were made. It's 1988. It's not ancient history, but times have changed. I mean, us that are, you know, we're in our 40s, so we don't want to think it's that long ago, but, you know, it's long enough that changes occur. In Mississippi Burning, the FBI are the heroes of the civil rights movement. I mean, the FBI, the organization that hounded Dr. King and Malcolm X and the Black Panthers and did so much work to destabilize the civil rights movement, they are presented as, as the, the heroes in that movie. Um, a movie like Glory. Now, I get no problem with Glory. Every time I see it, you know, on TV, you know, I usually watch it to the end. Uh, but even in the movie like Glory, by necessity, you know, it is focused on, um, yeah, I was trying to think of the general thing. Yeah, Shaw, Shaw, thank you, had a little bit of a, uh, because, you know, it's based on his letters. So, okay, he's going to be a central part of that movie. But even in that movie, and, and it's a little bit of a, you know, controversial viewpoint, but the message it sends is that, well, through the death of black persons, America is redeemed. Uh, if you look at a movie like Amistad, directed by Steven Spielberg, another great movie, but it kind of sends the message that have faith in the justice system. Everything will work out just fine. Um, or, let me see if I can come up with one more example. Um, 
I mean, a movie like The Help. <laughs> you know, where I would love a movie about the experience of black domestic workers in the South in the 1950s or 60s. Uh, and we get their experiences distilled through, you know, the, the hopes of this young white woman. Um, what the films of Spike Lee, the Hughes brothers, Shaka King, and others do is it reminds us that sometimes when black people in this country did everything that they were supposed to do, when they put their head down and didn't complain, when they worked hard, when they served the country in the military, when they did everything that the American narrative tells you this is how you become a good citizen, this is how you improve your life and your community, that sometimes even when you do all those things, the system slams the door in your face. Sometimes it doesn't all just work out. You can't just put your faith in the justice system, put your faith in the FBI, put your faith in tomorrow will be a different day and things will be better. Uh, films by those types of artists, I do think, remind us of that. Um, last statement, this is from our colleague uh, who wasn't able to join us. And again, this was a relatively brief one, but um, uh, he is uh, a first grade teacher, educator who specializes in identifying students uh, who should be put into the gifted program. So these are the ones who can kind of fast track toward advanced placements. Uh, and his research in particular focuses on why there aren't enough black, there's not enough black representation in that. Uh, not that it matters, but he is African American, but he couldn't join us today. So this is his statement, which I love how a lot of it's a response to you. Anyway, uh, while it is important to acknowledge that concerns raised about the potential biases and limitations uh, in the selection of films for a history course, it is also essential to consider a more balanced perspective and the practical challenges involved in curriculum development. The need for a balanced approach, uh, it is true that many high school uh, history courses have often centered on the quote white narratives, uh, and diversif uh, diversifying the curriculum is a valid concern. However, it is crucial not to swing in the opposite extreme uh, by exclusion, focusing on films made by black filmmakers about black Americans. A comprehensive approach to teaching history should include diverse perspectives and experiences that made up the American tapestry. This means incorporating films from a variety of backgrounds, including those of non-white filmmakers and those uh, that may not fit into the specific narrative. As educators, it's our job to search tirelessly in order to find movies that challenge and stretch our thinking, rather than simply using what everyone else is using, because this is the way that it's always been done. Uh, the role of filmmaker identity uh, is that while uh, it is valuable, uh, if I will intend to include black filmmakers, we must be careful to ensure that the filmmakers' uh, identity dictate. Oh, careful to ensure that the filmmakers' identity dictates the quality perspective of their work. Uh, great films can be made by individuals from different backgrounds and different perspectives. Furthermore, uh, some white filmmakers have produced films that genuinely contribute to the nuanced understanding of African American history. Uh, while we're still waiting on this to ha uh, on this one, to, while we are still waiting on this to happen at times. Uh, finally, there is the potential for biases. Uh, as many of my co-panelists have mentioned, it's us, uh, that these movies are made by black filmmakers, tell black narratives, and yet seem to have non-black uh, headliners or stars pushed on the cover. Uh, it's imperative that we do not over, uh, that our due diligence uh, not overdo it in researching the accuracy of the film and the way the filmmakers portray the story. Oftentimes, focusing exclusively on films by black filmmakers can inadvertently lead to other biases. Uh, it may unintentionally reinforce the idea that only specific members of a racial or ethnic group are qualified to tell certain stories. In a diverse and interconnected society, it is important to encourage a variety of voices and perspectives in storytelling. Um, but always remember, at the end of the day, who's holding the bag. Uh, as you watch black films, watch all the movies to the end, it will show you again, who in fact holds that bag. Uh, who funded the project uh, will be apparent in the way that the savior is often sensationalized. Remember, black filmmakers have to go to non-black owned banks for funding. That's my colleague's uh, perception on that. Okay, so we have spent enough time talking. Uh, I'm going to throw it open with this poll. So if you guys have the, the app for this, and you can see the poll. Uh, are, can you see the poll? I'm not sure if you can see the responses. I think it might only be for the, okay, it might only be for us. Yeah, I think it said. Uh, okay, uh, all right, so we'll, we'll shoot on this. Is that the QR code? No, unfortunately, the QR code, that, that's the QR codes. Uh, we're recording through this, and it's going to be up there. But if you go to the Wova app, the poll is there, but I'm not sure if you can see the response. So I'll just read out here. These are just some of the responses that we've received, and I want to throw them out there to your interest, to your comments. So, um, the 2020 film The Banker, which I've not seen, but I did read about, I found very fascinating. Uh, Malcolm X, of course, 1992, right? And the one, yeah, one uh, Selma, uh, another one from Malcolm X, Beloved, uh, Who Dreams, which I understand is a documentary. 
uh, which again, documentaries are great. It's not quite what we're talking about today as far as like feature films, but that's a whole different uh, commentary there. Uh, the Color Purple, of course, which is a new one coming out, right? Or did it already come out? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a, it already came out. And I don't know, we don't know whether the person was referring to the original. The, yeah, the, 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 the Oprah Winfrey, um, Danny Glover. And, and by the way, that's kind of an interesting one because the original was directed by Steven Spielberg. But it's based on the work, of course, of the author Alice Walker. And that would be one of those movies where the director is white, but I think is a really superb movie that gets into some intricacies of the experience of African American women specifically. Um, and so in that case, it's one of those that kind of, yeah, okay, you know, Steven Spielberg, but there's a lot of value here. This is the diversity of the, that they're probably talking about. Well, shoot, let's throw it out there, since that's where you wanted to start there. Uh, anybody either want to speak on Color Purple and why you should, why you shouldn't, what you thought about it? Uh, I think Color Purple um, is relevant because, and why people can watch it, even though Steven Spielberg um, directed it, is because he made sure to have black voices around him. Um, you know, there was controversy, should he um, direct that film, again, a black film, about these narratives of these women, and. Um, there was a question that Alice Walker wanted him to even direct the film, but they made sure she was around, Quincy Jones was around, and he listened to other scholars around him of what those little intricacies of black culture was without making it buffoonery, because it was, what, 84, you know, when something around that time, when we're just coming out of the black exploitation era, and black exploitation can sometimes, you know, uh, take a couple of different uh, routes. It has its place, but also, you know, Hollywood then really exploited black exploitation and uh, wanted to make their dollar. But uh, Color Purple, that version of 84, uh, it holds the test of time because he made sure, you know, that we were at the table with him versus him just doing it by himself and what he assumed is. Uh, so you can uh, learn so much from it, you can cry from it, you can laugh at, you know, the little things are there that you can still laugh at even though it's movie and book is heavy um, and many other areas so that's, that's why people go watch it. Uh, it's set in the 20s, 20s, 30s. Yeah. In Georgia. So, uh, in Georgia. Uh, so it tells the story of these two sisters and abuse and things. Yeah. <laughs> Just before anyone else, um, offers an opinion, it's just your comments made me think of when uh, Spike Lee was making Malcolm X. There had been efforts for years to have Malcolm X's story be told by a major studio film. <clears throat> and by the way, it's, it's crazy because more time has now passed between that film and today that passed between Malcolm X's death and the release of that movie. That doesn't matter. Thank you for that reminder. Um, the uh, one person who was initially slated to direct a Malcolm X uh, biopic was Norman Jewison, a white director. Uh, but there was rightly concern about you know who is going to be telling this story. And even when Spike Lee kind of became the leader in the clubhouse, if you will, I remember uh, Marie, Amira Baraka had concerns, he thought that Spike Lee would be too bourgeois uh, and that he would uh, smooth Malcolm X's more radical edges. Uh, so even uh, in the case of a black filmmaker, there was concern about you know, what, uh, what exactly is going to be the story about Malcolm X that you present. I mean, isn't that kind of, and this is jumping top to a little bit, um, how happened with Black X? You guys have seen black, which this is what I love about this is that we're talking about high school class. Do you know if it is college equivalent? So would you go to black class? I definitely would. Uh, just a side note, uh, I show I mean, I'd show Schindler's list and it'd be early, so why would we not? You've got the same kind of kind of gun there. Uh, but of course I'm also really not teaching there anymore, so I can get away with that. But um, you know, black class, but doesn't it have the same story that you kind of highlighted earlier? It's like, well, at the end, for those who haven't seen it, at the end. The bad cop is fired, yeah. the Klan is embarrassed, and the cops are the ones who, who win the day. Now, I do like what Spike Lee did at the end, though. It is like, even with that victory, right. he then panned out to, like, well, the Klan's not gone. 
Uh, they, yes, they were embarrassed, but David Duke continued to have a career for 30 plus years. Right, I mean, I think the, yeah, yeah, you know, the message I took is that, you know, there's a new clan, it's just not wearing the white hoods and it's not calling itself the clan. Well, that was, that was what was happening in the 70s with David Duke, of course, but I don't know, I still felt like at the end of the movie, it's like, well, we won, right? So Rex is over, didn't we beat the clan? Didn't Selma do that? Selma did that at the bell. Oh, yeah, right, the courts rule in their favor. They just extended the, the, the victory of civil rights in 1965 instead of 63. No? Are you speaking in terms of like whether a film, not, not the actual event. The all film presents like a happy ending. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you can have a happy ending and still also have a critical lens of American history for sure. So I'm sorry, we, we kind of took, a, took back the control of the, the discussion here. So we'd like to turn it back to you. So I do teach the AP African American Studies pilot course, and so the Amistad is part of our curriculum. And so we looked at the testimony, we looked at the primary sources, and then I did show my students on the side. <laughs> and one of the things that I asked them that they had to respond to was, uh, does, is this a white savior film? Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't think about it from the perspective of being a white director. I it just didn't occur to me until you said it. Um, my thing was, was there black agency? Did they say themselves, or did... Uh, oh, Debbie Allen wasn't producing any of that films. Oh, Debbie Allen was yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, and so that was, so that was <coughs> one of my questions that I asked them, and we actually did have a really good discussion around that, uh, that particular question. And most of my students, and I do have a majority of African-American students, felt like that uh, that it wasn't a white savior type of movie, that there was a lot of agency within it. So I ended up being, I guess, glad that I did show it to them. You Were you the one that messaged us about I that you were the teaching in the pilot program? I don't remember if I did or not. So I don't we, 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 we received a message from somebody who was uh, teaching one of the AP African American Study pilot courses, and we were thrilled yeah. uh, that we had somebody. Yeah. Oh, I asked if there was anybody. Uh, I didn't miss a sheet. I think I put on the board. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there anybody teaching AP African American? We, we just we, we had a question. We just basically said, you know, how is this going to fit through? So um, I answered her question too because we we are piloting the AP African American Studies course as well on the African American culture. Um, I have a I don't. Maybe a full question or a thought overall since it's more panel conversation here is that the concern I'm a district office person, so we get a lot of emails. Uh, or we get, will this be on the six o'clock news? So we get those type of questions, and it is always a concern. So the question I think I have out overall is that I'm, I'm, I'm a proponent for clips, uh, relevant clips of movies, more than a proponent of the entirety of the movies. Sometimes you can show the whole movie and it may not connect, especially with the AP African American Studies College Board has given the structural process of what's taking place and what needs to be um, taught. So then, for me, I'm thinking the idea is a clip base that obviously should correlate to the structure of the course because a lot of our concern that will come our way is that they show the whole film of the Black Klansmen. That's a six o'clock news issue <laughs> that would take place if an AP, it doesn't matter if it's AP, IV, if it, it doesn't matter, it's still K-12 uh, in that bracket base. And so that's my question of all. Are we talking about a clip base view and then a conversational component with the students? Because I also want to have our teachers feel comfortable about talking about divisive or cultural sensitive topics without feeling like they're also going to have to worry about their space because we're also trying to protect their best interests to be able to do it. So just getting thoughts and perspectives on well, the kind of teacher level and the issue level concern. Because I do um, research specifically on the use of film in the classroom, just generally speaking. It's just one area that I look into. Um, and yeah, it's the same thing. It's like it's all about strategy. Uh, so what you're just discussing is strategy. Um, is it even productive to show a two-hour film regardless of just the greatest film on earth, or to show you know, five minute clip. I'm a big advocate as uh, however long you show of a film, you better be talking at least that long. So if you show a two hour movie, now you have to have a two hour conversation, that's a whole week curriculum, which can it's work. It's important to say, I'm glad you said that, because sometimes if we give information out, mm -hmm. just again, 
when you talk to a large group of people, they take away uh, exactly those words like, well, oh, I could teach, I'll teach all three hours of that class, of that, uh, <laughs> that video. And so I'm always looking at language. You know, when I share this or we give examples of how you can really engage this course or whatever the case may be, the terminology will have to be, but, like you said, you should speak as long now. Strategic ethics, no problem. <laughs> 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 Speaking as sense. long as a movie, all the way through. Mm -hmm. But the strategic, <laughs> I'm a logistic minded person, so strategically, what does that look like for the success? Well, a big factor, of course, is is the intent. I mean, we all know that. And just, I'm assuming this is not the crowd that's going to be putting a movie on because they want to kill two hours, right? So that then you're going to have those teachers anyway. That should be across the board. But what we really want to get across here, one of the else, is exactly what you brought up. Uh, you know, why are you showing? Films. And that's where I kind of open up and say, you can show portions of the help for the purpose of the conversation to be like, this is a perfect example of the white lens narrative, a fiction story uh, that is then, uh, uh, and again, uh, Octavia Spencer and Gila Davis definitely are the dominant forces in that movie, but it's all in the stone. It's supposed to be again, the lens in which they're looking through all this. Uh, and that of itself, I think, is huge to this African American studies course, not a history course. And that's where I think the intent really becomes very important. What are they doing with this film? Mm -hmm. You guys want to jump in on that? Yeah, please. I was just going to say, like, do you think it depends on the county as well? Like, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, um, and I show 13th and every year. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do is we do construction, I saw a story in, I don't even know if you call it the news when you see things now um, online, I don't know, <laughs> um, I, but it came across uh, that there was a school district and I forget where, where the instructor and the school got in trouble because the students were reading Between the World and Me. Which is, there's nothing controversial in that book. <laughs> he's, he's just... He's hoping his son is able to grow up safe. Um, but that's a whole thing. Well, you all bring up a very excellent point. Is, is, and as I mentioned before, you have to consider, is there going to be a 6 o'clock news report on this? Is there going to be parents concerned? I got none of that when I show Shinder's list. In Europe, right? None. And there's everything in there you could possibly not want to see. Nudity, violence, also obviously the certain parts of the kind of skin, but none of those that you respect from this. And that's why this conversation is so important and so necessary. Um, I, I also teach the course. I taught the course last year. Um, something that I've like struggled with in showing certain things in the course is kind of thinking it, thinking about it from like a trauma-informed perspective. Um, like when uh, I was thinking about showing clips from Roots and things like that speaking Transatlantic slave trade. Like I physically, personally, could not watch it, um, and so I'm just curious about your thoughts about showing things that kind of, uh, you know, and might be tra like even more traumatic for students who identify as black. And, yeah. For years, I showed uh, the Middle Passage scene from Amistad, um, and this goes back to the clip-based. 
approach too because you can show the whole movie and show it you know, in discussing the transatlantic slave trade, you know, a dramatic and historically accurate depiction of, of the Middle Passage. But after several years of doing that, you know, I realized how difficult that scene uh, is to watch for anybody, and, and particularly for, for young black persons. And so the first allowance I made is that you know, I would comment on what they were about to watch, and I told them that if they wanted to put their head down or to leave the room, um, you know, they were welcome to do that. But that was never an adequate, you know, approach. And so once uh, learning, uh, what's the term they use, like backboard and VQR, uh, learning, oh, 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 back, you know, oh, oh, you know oh, the oh, digital oh, learning platforms, uh, when they came along that really was kind of a godsend in a way because what I could do then is tell them that if they want to get a historically accurate depiction of the Middle Passage, uh, that I would put that clip on Blackboard. That's what South Carolina State uses anyway. And they weren't required to watch it. Um, they didn't have to, if they did not want to watch it, that was their own decision because it was it is brutal to watch, it is difficult, it could really trigger, you know, very emotional responses in people. Um, I encourage them to, but I made it their choice whether they wanted to watch that or not. Uh, and I feel much better about that approach. Uh, because then it's not me shoving something down their throats. Uh, they can put themselves, if they want to watch it, in the headspace that they need to be to do so. To your point, point about the 6 o'clock news, I work in Loudoun County, Virginia, and one of the things we talked about, policies even with racial slurs, <coughs> the teachers have been wondering, are we reading the entire Reason in the Sun? Are students reading it out loud? Are we watching the entire movie and it has the in it? And so by using clips, um, I think that is helpful, but then it's this conversation that I honestly think students should be part of. I personally don't want to be, when I think about being a student, I didn't want to be in a classroom where people are looking at literature that had the inward personally. Other students may not feel that way. And so I'm always interested in what um, teachers do or how they approach literature or movies, but that, that's a part of a lot of people's black culture experience, and so it's going to be there, and we want to be careful not to censor things as well. So I'm always intrigued how other people are handling things like that. Well, for me, one, I'm from Memphis, so 60% African American, then go to a school, graduating with only black students, um, and maybe two others, but not white. Uh, so my experience is different, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be bothered in a class if it was there because it's given within context. Uh, but when I'm watching a film like Roots, with my students, I teach African American history, so my class makes me think that that's another conversation. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, when I teach even regular U.S. history or African American history, if I show uh, roots, and I will show it in entirety, um, not in a week or anything like that, but as we're discussing whatever portion of the black experience in the, the colonial time period or interbellum time period, the uh, History Channel, first of all, had a wonderful packet of questions. So when those tough work scenes uh, come up, the kids can express how they felt and it also keeps them from just sitting there and watching the film. In this day and age, people have their phones out to the side, you know, and they're not paying attention. So it's great on top of that. So most films that I watch, you know, especially uh, my African history class is obviously an elective. So it uh, keeps them engaged, but it also cuts out the idea of the sitting there watching it, you know. Um, and so, um, then there's things like check GPT. Uh, so they create questions, you know, that I can use for films that I didn't have questions for before, like Soldier Story, great movie, you know, uh, for special movies. Uh, but I didn't have questions for that before, and now I would, but the, I don't, you shouldn't be sensitized to take those things out. It's about building relationships, going back to, that point or the point that you had about uh, the trauma of it all. 
it, I think if I'm walking into a history class or uh, the English class in some cases and they're reading certain things, I know the black, what the history in America was for African Americans. So I'm not going in there with the mindset of, I don't want to see, you know, like, oh, don't, don't play the Middle Passage. It's what it is, you know, and, and that's, um, you know, and I get the um, disclaimer that we want to make sure we have for those moments because you will have a kid who's sensitive and don't want to see it, and, and that's fine, I understand it. But as a whole, we are running into people such as uh, Ms. Sanders and others who want to take those things out, and you don't, you want to watch taking that out just because we're talking about, you know, the possible trauma. But these kids are so removed from this stuff, you know, that they don't just, not, the majority of them don't have that visceral response to it in the same way. You know, they, they're, they're here. Wow, that happened. You know, they're so removed from it you know, that because they didn't hear it every day. I'm 42, so I'm one generation from the civil rights movement. So I grew up hearing those things. I was a tour guide at the civil rights museum, so I'm gay at 14 years old. So I gave those types of same stories. So for me, I'm probably be sensitized and I can watch and see those images without the same uh, response. But I don't think we need to take that away, but we have to find building relationships with your students because we have people in here who are on races teaching an AP history, uh, African American studies class. And yet that, that means that you build a certain relationship with your students to be able to accept being in that class with, you know, non-black teachers, some of the classes with non-black teachers. So you continue to do that with even the films that you choose to show that are relevant because the students are going to know it is relevant to the story because they need to see the vision. We can say read the primary source documents, but the visual only backs it up even more because they just won't understand it in the same way, in the same vein that we want to get across it. Sure, I'll also show the new version of mm, Yeah, I showed the new version. The first episode, because it does such a great job of showing what Africa was like, what mm, yeah. civilization was like uh, before enslavement. But I'll also use it uh, to tell them what a watershed moment the original miniseries race mm -hmm. was. I, re I can still remember in middle school and watching every single <coughs> night blue. And it was one of those points in my life when my life was changed. I was not the same person uh, that I had been before watching that. And so I talked to them about <coughs> the watershed moment and how many people were blue to it and like some of the changes that were brought about because of it. Um, and so I did just that moment, the beginning of the episode because I think it does you know, such mm -hmm. a good job of showing what happened. We didn't know we were going to have a projector, so I had no actual like presentation set up. Anyone has a recommendation for this? I saw the rings, seriously, because it takes me all the way through. I mean, it's broken down, obviously, you know, um, but it, the way it's broken down, I show it, even if it's only sometimes 30 minutes, depending on what we're talking about that day, um, within the first part, because it does start with that, you know, and showing that from the 2016 version, I think, it came out. So it does, uh, it gives people more detail in the beauty of Africa, not just, you know, Tarzan version. So I start there with that film, and then I do show 13 uh, right afterwards. Yeah, I said, um, sorry, I didn't No, no, you're fine. Um, I showed between the Roll of Me, the Roll of Me, the and the Documentary. And there is 13. I show Lori.
and then we'll hopefully teach the AP course next year. Um, so I'm really happy just to like get your email and see the trouble we have. Like, we have, I'm mean, the we have an issue. We just don't have. There's a great documentary. Black history is not just African American history, it's 
especially in terms of the United States. And so we want to include those things. And then going back to the film side of it, it's a good time then to this make those discussions about a film such as I mean, the criticism, plus the minus of the film, but in the heights, you know, um, love the movie, but the criticism was that it, they didn't have any Afro Latin or visible Afro Latin American students uh, uh, characters on there uh, because I understand phenotype and all those things, but it was no one visible, and so it erases those people, uh, those African or Afro Latinos from the story, or again into the colorism conversation and all that. But it just it will open up so much dialogue in class, especially in um, your latter half of the school year. You know, as you've now gone through so many different uh, conversations. So that, you can look at it in that way, even though the film is light uh, in some areas. Um, I know it has its social commentary as well about immigration, but uh, I think that's a great film as well. Let me just, because again, we a little short on time here, because mm -hmm. we're just a spectacular. Right. No, 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 this is good. This is exactly what we're hoping to do. Uh, but because um, what you're commenting on is, again, imagine how impactful this class could be if we really approached it as an African American studies course. Because we keep, and again, I'm, I'm history by training. You're history by training. Uh, it's not like you're history by training. So we, we, we keep coming back to this, like, oh, we want to study history. And the curriculum is huge into that course. But I mean, like, if we kept this as like a capstone style research, now you don't have to show these movies. The students get to choose what movies they want to research and study and, and that sort of thing. But this is in the curriculum, by the way. So I wanted to highlight this. Uh, this was kind of the inspiration for this particular panel, um, is this discussion here. It, it's, it's, it's at the end. This is the end of the class. Right? Three-fourths of the class, you've seen the curriculum, uh, those who have taught the class, is, is history, 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 which is great. You need the background. But then it finally does get into the modern studies, black futures, and Afrofuturism. And the only movie that I saw listed, I mean, there, there are directors listed here, but the only movie I saw listed in here was Black Panther. Which, now you get in a whole different universe of what are we talking about when we start talking about sci-fi or Marvel, which I'm not a Marvel movie fan. But, you know, again, the, the, like I said, the um, Black Panther is allowed to be just as bad as Captain America is, it's fine. Uh, but it's, this, it's these are the kind of things that, that again, like I said, I'm not a Marvel fan, but we start talking about the potential of what we can really open this class up to when it comes to those sort of studies aspects. Just out of curiosity, have you ever heard of Cosmic Slot? No. Yeah, gotta check that out. Are you guys familiar with the source uh, Faces at the Bottom of the Well? No. I've seen a couple of Hayes nodding and so forth. So I didn't know there was an actual HBO uh, depiction of the space traders that was there. So you know, okay, yeah, the ones are not, I didn't know exactly the story I'm telling about. Um, I, I won't give the whole story, but uh, but this is a great example. It's 1994, it's an HBO anthology story um, that is completely um, wild. So the short premise, uh, space aliens come down to the United States uh, and offer America all the gold they need to pay off their debt, all the chemicals they need to clean up their environment. All they want is to take all the African Americans. And so the whole thing is this debate about whether that's going to happen or not. And there's no telling where they're going. Like, there is no, like, this is a good thing, this is a bad thing. So, anyway, but this is the kind of, like, speculative Afrofuturism, which it's uh, Derek Bell's author, correct? Yeah, Derek Bell um, is the author of the original book, uh, 1991, what was it, 91, 92, right in there. Um, and they, again, they made this film, and it's George Clinton, uh, the head of the parliament, uh, is, the, is the narrator of this whole thing. So. Imagine what you could do with something like this, getting completely ahistorical, getting completely outside of, well, you know, is glory giving us an accurate representation? We're not, if you show a sci-fi film, there's no accuracy. There's only interpretation. There's only critical analysis. And there's only, this is the 90s, you know, in this time period. Yeah? Isn't there a film, early 90s, maybe late 80s, it's called White Man's Burden, where they have yep. the race yeah. reverse? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's John Travolta in it. And there's, um, uh, what's the, uh, oh shoot, I'm gonna name of it right now. I'm gonna, uh, and I'm gonna, gonna, gonna uh, offer, uh, I'm gonna offer just kind of make my closing thoughts as well is that, you know, in, the, in line of thinking about, uh, you know, like this as an African American studies course, the vast majority of the movies that we have highlighted are historically themed. Uh, for lack of a better term, about slavery and, and civil rights, most of them. But if you're going to have a true African American studies course, I think it's just as important to show films that highlight black families, black relationships, 
you know, a movie like Moonlight, which is such a brilliant exploration of black sexuality. Uh, I know Netflix just released the Bayard Rustin movie, which is, is okay, but, you know, there's such a dearth of films that explore issues like that. Or a movie like Soul Food, which shows the, you know, the importance of the black family. And then, yeah, when I talk to uh, colleagues and to students, some of the movies, the most beloved movies, are movies like Love Jones, Love and Basketball, and wildly among you know, young women, 18, 22 years old, they love the movie Poetic Justice, starring Tupac Shakur and Janet Jackson back in, I think, like 1992 or so. And I think it's because it's a, just a movie about a man and a woman falling in love with each other, and they they happen to be black. They take a story that Hollywood has told from the beginning of time, but it's people that look like them and sound like them and they're from backgrounds like theirs. And so I think if you are truly going to have an African American studies course, introducing movies like that is just as important as introducing those that are in, the, in that historical lens. With the danger yeah. of, of making this a tokenized version of this. This is, I'm plugging his, this is his article. So then it makes sense for being heroes, the use of misuse of Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy and political propaganda. It's so easy for this course to just become that. To just be like, well, let's just make sure we put extra emphasis on what's already being taught in the U.S. And then we get away from it being a studies course. So it's so, February, so we've got to talk about our heroes now. Okay, so anyway, we are, yeah, unfortunately, we well, one time, you were such a great audience. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, not to derail your presentation. Um, thank you for this discussion. Um, I'm one of the pilot teachers from last year. I'm a pilot again. I'm also a college board workshop consultant for AP African American Studies. So I'm one of the people who does the AP Summer Institutes. Um, so if anyone wants to um, get my contact information, I'm more than happy to talk to you about the course. Um, also, the college board is going to release the new version of the framework very soon. Um, so, again, like if anyone who's currently teaching the course or is interested in the course and wants to know information, then you can um, come and talk to me. I'm also doing a presentation a little bit about AP African American Studies later today at 415 called Building a Multicultural Social Studies Program. So you can also check in with me at that point.